Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the April meeting of Farmland Preservation, Inc. Um, uh, with me tonight are Sean Carney, uh, Dan Bonkowski, and George Hines. So uh, we'll start off with the approval of minutes of the March 22nd meeting, and I'll hand it over to you, George. Okay. Um, I'd like to hear a motion for the meeting minutes um, being approved from March. I'll make, I'll make, I'll make a motion. Second. Seconded. Okay, great. Then I guess, uh, Mike, they're all approved. Uh, we, we do need to vote on that, George. So if you you'd ask. Said, I thought. Oh, okay, well, go ahead. we got a first and a second. Then we just okay. need all, all in, in favor. favor. <laughs> all in favor. Aye. 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 Now, now we're done. Thanks, George. Okay, uh, Dan, Treasurer's Report. Yep, um, we just had two, two items of activity last month. We paid $10,000 to uh, Corcoran Landscaping. This was for all the winter work that they did. And then we also paid, that, paid Corcoran as well, $1,200. And that was for that, um, that tree work on Longshore. Okay. And so all the winter work was all the work that we had previously gone over at the last meeting. Um, so I don't think we need to review anything there. Um, and that was it. Okay. Very good. Our tax, uh, our, our tax returns are extended. Um, we'll use uh, Robert Small again. Um, we didn't get an engagement letter yet, but he extended our returns for us already. Excellent. That, that's it. That's it. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Turn it over to Sean for update on corporate landscaping, winter jobs, and uh, the general buffer maintenance plan. All right. So first, starting with the winter jobs, as uh, Dan stated, Corcoran um, billed us for the 10 winter days that we had contracted them for. I updated the uh, spreadsheet in our shared file. All of the jobs on here were complete except one, which was the Makefield Brook in Brentwood Road project that Dennis had brought up on Makefield Brook Farm, which we uh, decided to move to the 2023 winter project. That would be project 1A. Um, the reason that wasn't complete is because partially way through the winter projects, we had been contacted about a, a job to be done over on Throwbridge, which we, um, which we did, and that took up the final hours that we had uh, for Corcoran. Once he was done with the winter projects, he removed the tree on Longshore on March 29th. That was removed for a cost of twelve hundred. As Dan stated, we've uh, we've been invoiced for that. Um, so all of those jobs are done. In speaking with Mr. Corcoran, he did mention that there is probably another day's worth of work to be done over at uh, the hedgerow there at, at Trowbridge, um, just cleaning up more that just kind of has been left for years. So I think I'll throw that on the 2023 winter project list and we'll see where it shakes out um, in importance once we get there. You know, I have a feeling going forward, you know, some of the buffer areas outside of uh, what, what uh, Corcoran Landscaping will be doing will probably be some of our higher agenda items for the winter, but we will see. As far as the general buffer uh, maintenance, I have gone over all of the details with Matt and Lance Corcoran. I have a text message set up with the two of them. We're kind of in constant communication uh, if there's anything I need to be aware of or anything they need to be aware of, whether it's coming from neighbors with issues or complaints, uh, or if they need to feedback through us that there's things being thrown over the fence or so on, we have a direct line of communication with them, which is great. I reached out to Matt about kind of being a bit of an advisor when it comes to the upcoming um, walk that we have. I believe it's on the 29th, uh, the spring no. tour. April 30th. April 30th. Uh, you know, just as far as any issues or any points 
that we should, you know, be aware of or bring up, um, which is good because, you know, they'll have their eyes on the buffer areas quite often. I believe they will begin the first round of buffer cutting yeah, early May. They want to allow the farmers to go out and plant the crop first, which has not yet started. I did see Tim Stewart's truck parked in one of the farms yesterday afternoon, which makes me believe they're probably getting closer to planting. We, they had believed mid-April was their, um, what they were aiming for, but with all of the rain, who knows if they needed to um, the ground to firm up or not. But anyway, uh, first week or first 10 days of May, we should see the uh, first round of buffer cutting get started. I would assume it's going to be, I don't know, probably a two week project to get around all of the buffer areas that have been designated to them, but I'll obviously keep an eye on it and have good communication with them and report back to this group uh, with things, but no open items as of now uh, on the buffer areas or the, the winter work. So we can close those two out for now. And then we do have, um, can you remind me what the summer work agreement is? Sure. So we had originally um, in the contract with Corcoran um, stated that we would take 10 winter days at $1,000 each and two summer days at $2,000 each um, for the coming years. Now, um, you know, I, I don't see them holding our feet to the fire over the two summer days if we don't need them, especially given the fact that now they're kind of doing the buffers and, um, you know, in charge of probably 85 to 90 percent of that buffer acreage. But we do have them at that locked in price for two summer days for anything to come up. I'm thinking we kind of use those days more for, hey, we had a tree fall here or we have this work here that needs to be done kind of more ad hoc yeah. stuff. But if we start to get a little bit later into the summer and we haven't used it and we want to, then we have that option as well. But like I said, I, Great. I, don't, I don't feel as though they'll hold our, our feet to the fire for those two days, given uh, you know, the new work that they'll be doing. I, I'm sure we'll be able to fill it. So, Yeah, agreed. And just for the minute, just for the minute, Sean, um, you mentioned Trowbridge and uh, mm -hmm. for Janelle uh, doing the minutes. That's Heather Ridge. Correct. Heather Ridge Farm. Correct. I forget the exact address, Dan, that we were working on, but we had that joint project with one of our neighbors. I think it was Tom and Bernadette. If I'm correct. Um, who yeah. had brought us over, showed us their property. Uh, we obviously had a couple of boundary trees, a couple of trees on our side that we had taken care of. And then at the same time, they had done some joint work at their own expense uh, that took about a day's worth of work. Uh, so that was kind of the, the balance of the work that we had, plus then some extra work. And while Portman was there, he just noted that that area had kind of gotten very overgrown, a lot of down things that could probably use another day's worth of work. And that's, uh, I think it's, and it's all on the farm side at 2037 Trowbridge. That's correct. Good, good. Okay, is that it? Uh, that is it for that agenda item, Mike. Okay, and then the next one you've actually started, uh, you touched on the uh, Longshore, the large tree that was down. I'll just add that, um, that Mr. Kearney uh, contacted um, me about that uh, to say that during a, uh, one, of the, one of the recent windstorms, that a very large tree that was actually more in the farm than in the buffer area had come down and, um, you know, thought we should know. So, um, and then as you said, the Corcoran landscaping took it down and I, uh, I guess some of the larger chunks were put sort of in the middle there. We gave them permission to do that, Mike, if it made it easier, quicker, so on. But I can tell mm -hmm. you, from the road, you can't see anything. If they did decide to leave anything behind in that island of trees, it's not visible to me. So maybe they were able to- I thought the same that. thing. I, yeah, yeah, I, I thought the thought, same thing. I, I, I couldn't see anything that was left there, but I didn't walk the whole way up. 
Yeah, I walked by it the other day and saw the same thing. There was nothing really that you could see right. anywhere in that uh, tree area. So that was a good outcome. Good, good. Yeah, very good outcome. All right, so we've covered um, the long shore, the large tree. Uh, the next one was on Stackhouse. Uh, this is a Mrs. Buckley at 1582 Brookfield Road um, that had had some buffer area that needed cleaning. Yeah, so just for a little background, during our last buffer cleanup of Stackhouse back in 2021, when corporate landscaping was out there doing the work, um, Miss Buckley had gone outside to introduce herself to the landscapers and point out some different issues behind her residence. They called me and I went over, introduced myself and who we were, um, so on. Uh, they did a fine job cleaning back behind that fence line. But we, uh, the township actually received a uh, notification from Miss Buckley recently um, about her back fence line. So I went over and took care of it. Um, I don't know. I was probably there about an hour, maybe a little bit north of an hour. Uh, I documented it with, with pictures and so on. But the issue that's going on there is not really farmland preservation issues. It's that the fence line of ours, which in the letter to the township, Miss Buckley asks if she can take down our fence or, or uh, approaches that subject of removing our fence. The issue is not with our fence. It's that years ago, a white picket style fence was put up on Mrs. Buckley's property, approximately 10 inches in front of our fence. So it leaves this void area where you know, viney types of, of, of plants and bushes are growing and originating and kind of growing up the fence, cli you know, climbing onto our fence as well as hers and creating this area where things are coming up and over. So I went over and first kind of we whacked the area with a blade, made sure everything was down, and then ultimately just got hand pruners and hand pruned the whole area and pulled everything out. But about 90% of everything I was cutting all originated in this void area that's been created because of the neighbor's fence and our fence. And it's going to continue to happen. So I did it this, you know, this one time to, to take care of it. And again, I documented it with pictures. It's all nice and cleaned up. I did reach out to Mrs. Buckley, left a nice detailed message, um, never received a phone call back or anything. So I'm assuming the issue has kind of um, gone away. We did follow up with a letter that stated kind of how to contact us and who we are again so that she can come directly to us with any issues instead of going to the township first and then the township looking for us. Um, I've driven by several times. It still looks, you know, still looks good. I pointed out that area to Corcoran as a property to kind of keep an eye on for when cutting. But again, you know, we can only do so much on our side. We can't get to that area, which is ultimately the neighbor's property because of that void area in the fence. So for now, I'd say it's handled, but in time to come, things will grow back there. Uh, and it will again become an issue most likely. Yeah, thanks. I would just point out that even when there is not a uh, immediate fence on the other side of ours in close proximity, that even then over the years with vines growing on our fence, that that can be hard to control and things grow back. And Dan, you can attest to the fact if you drive by Longshore, that first house that you, uh, John Lewis and I were out at, burned some, burned some of the vines out, dug them out, clipped, did everything you could and it, it still grows back. So it'll be a big benefit to have Matt out there uh, looking things over and alerting us if there's more than needs to be done. Yeah, correct. Hmm. Okay, any other comments on that? Okay, um, I, uh, Erica, just to check in, we have a, uh, an item at the end to ask for public comment, but has there been any uh, to this point? There's no public comment. Okay, thank you. All right, Dan, next item, update on Worthington uh, easement request on Heather Ridge. Yeah, so this is um, 
uh, Worthington and Shagan Custom Builders at 1491 Heather Ridge. They had reached out, um, I think initially by way of the township, um, and were just, you know, informally re- inquiring about uh, doing an easement across our property for to run sewer and water. Um, you know, at that, at that point, it was just kind of exploratory for them even figuring out what all their options are in the first place. Um, we had some conversations with them, um, you know, about potential options, some questions that we had. This was something newer to us about, you know, what, what kind of what were our concerns about taking an easement across our property. Uh, I spoke with the township and then reached out to um, the township solicitor, David Trulove. David came back. He spoke with then Jim Majewski, uh, the zoning officer, and they basically talked through about what, you know, what some of the options could be for uh, Worthington. And basically one of the things that we spoke about um, was, you know, can they just take it down, down the sidewalk essentially from the connection point that where they, the closest point that they can connect to water and sewer down the sidewalk practically in the public easement area and then up their driveway. And um, I relayed that back to Chance Worthington. He said, great feedback. Thank you so much. Um, I haven't, I I haven't heard anything else from him, you know, and that was three weeks ago, Um, just about three weeks ago. Um, Although I did the other day, I drove by there. There was a whole bunch of activity um, kind of along that little stretch right there and up their sidewalk. So I don't know if they already moved forward with something or if it's still in the works. Um, but I reached out to him to chance today just to check in and see if there was anything else, but I, I don't expect that we're going to hear anything back at this point that they're going to kind of take it down the sidewalk and up if they decide to go forward with it at all. Okay. So uh, no- yeah. And do we have any idea what's going on with the uh, the grass cutting in that area? It hasn't been mowed year to date, so just kind of curious if we if we know what's going to go on there. Um, yeah, I can check in with him. I mean, you know, we had a you know an agreement with him that he was going to mow that area in front of his property. That's that connects between it's his property uh, to the left of his driveway. If you're if you're standing on his driveway as you approach Heather Ridge Road, uh, he was going to mow that area and then some of the backside area there. Uh, I can check in with him just to see if they're still doing it. But that's something that we got to get on the radar about how do we want to handle that into the future, though, after he sells that, after he sells that property eventually. The reason I asked, Corcoran brought it to my attention that he said, Sean, that grass that was, you know, once maintained, uh, while we've been doing work there, we've noticed hasn't been cut at all. He said, "I," um, he said, "Our tractors, our mowing equipment is out there uh, weekly. If you need us to swing by and mow anything down, let me know." So it was just kind of like he was just looking out for it. But I am, um, I, I figured we'd just ask, and like you said, keep it on our radar for. Yeah, YouTube. no, and a great point though, because I should check in with him to see. Because I mean, I think they're going to be doing renovations on that property for quite some time, so. Um, you know, at least for this summer into the fall, uh, hopefully they'll be able to, the uh, Worthing, Chance Worthington and his team there will be able to maintain it. Good. I'm just making a note here for you, Dan. Uh, I'm just cutting on Heather Ridge. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thanks, Dan. Um, next topic is Makefield Brook. There were several issues that uh, Dennis had found. And Sean, you want to update us on that? You were involved in, in some of that. Sure. So, um, yeah, I'm piecing together two things here, covering for Dennis and then the stuff that I've been involved in. So let's start with upgraded no trespassing signs. Dennis had sent around an email on some no trespassing signs and why they were necessary. So on April 4th, Dennis and I met over there and installed three no trespassing signs along 
uh, Dolington Road, you know, approximately 10 feet off the road, three different sections of the woods that looked like there was heavy traffic kind of going through there. You know, they're, they're wooden signs. They won't last a long time, but they'll get the point across. There was fresh dumping that had just got on there in between the last time mm-hmm. Dennis was there and the time that uh, I was there. Uh, wood. And it looked like somebody had destructed some type of deck, maybe thrown wood in there. There was food, fresh food in there. That little pull-off area that's paved really is just incredibly inviting for people at the end of the day. So I don't know exactly what's going on. Dennis knows better than I, but I walked to those woods waiting for Dennis. A couple of tree stands back there. Uh, you know, it's an open area behind a res- you know, behind a, a community and then one across the street that it looks like people come over from a decent amount of littering. So the no trespassing signs are in. The township has been made aware of the amount of activity back there and it's been duly noted. So hopefully we see less activity on our property there. There's really no resolution with a fence, for instance, because we own part of it, but then the other part that is not owned by us it would be as simple as just walking around any fence that we put in. And there's a lot of old timber in that area that when it falls, it just takes everything with it. So, you know, there is no real fence option. It's just a matter of making that pull off less inviting and making those woods less inviting for uh, trespassing. The second is the cover of the well pipe. So as Dennis mentioned, there was an open well pipe, Uh, the open pipe, uh, to the well apparently is very deep. There is water at the bottom. The township has no record of the well and recommended that we hire a plumber to cap it. To this point, um, Dennis has reached out, but there has not been any communication back, but it's on our radar to have done. And then the missing I-295 fence, it's a 30 yard gap of fence that was removed during the construction Uh, for the installation of some crushed stone. Uh, Dennis has been in touch with the township. uh, Greg Huckle Bridge reached out to the contractor and is waiting to hear back on on a resolution. But hopefully fencing will be put back up uh, in that 30-foot section. But uh, obviously, Makefield Brook is is on our radar and a couple of things going on there all at once. Uh, Sean, going back to the no trespassing signs is what you said that there's not our property. As you look at it from Dolington, as you face in towards the woods and make feel, what part of that is not ours? Call it almost 50-50, Mike. So if you, if you stop there and look at our signs, you'll see three. One down close to the bridge, one probably 20 yards up, another right. one about 20 yards up. We have about 50 yards of that. And then you'll see our fence post. And the other side of that is the backside of the community that's, that's built back oh, in. There. Oh, so, okay. And we have a fence. Uh, there is a fence that divides, but there'd be no yeah. point in running a fence down Dolan <clears throat> to keep people from entering because all they're going to do is walk up 20 yeah. feet, walk right around it to get where they want to go. The township owns some of that road frontage and some of that okay. wooded area is owned by the township there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And if you look at it, there was a fence that ran there. Timber that has fallen has just completely demolished the fence to the point where you can just step right over it. So again, you know, somewhat, you know, pointless money spent putting up a fence there, which was my initial thought, like, Hey, why don't we just fence this off and make it much less inviting? But when you realize the option is just to walk around it, it's, it's simple. We, we could move the trespassing problem 40 feet to the right, I'm sure, because humans take the path of least resistance. They're not going to climb a fence if they can go to the other side of it, but it won't solve any issues. That's for sure. And the tree stands have, have been an issue since I joined the board. They've always been there. They've been unidentified. We couldn't really nail the uh, Sam Stewart down to whether it was his guys or uh, other people. I think it's a combination. And it, they just come and go. Yeah. So I kind of tagged where the stands were because they're in, I mean, there are, I kicked out 13 deer walking into those woods quietly and shallow. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of deer in that area, but there's also mm-hmm. a lot of tree stands in that area. Like, you know, more than you'd have a comfort level for as a hunter with how close other people would be to you. I had mentioned to Dennis, you know, perhaps we make some tags 
and zip tie them to these deer stands and put a note on them, you know, who we are, you know, please make contact with us, you know, about this stand. This helps us with the roster that we're keeping of hunters, who they yeah. are, license plate number. So when we see a car parked <clears throat> there, we know that it's a hunter um, license number, that, those types of things, just so we can keep a roster. But we talked about it down at Clearview uh, as well as there, where Dennis recently walked Clearview and found multiple tree stands. I think he said he found six. And wow. on Clearview, I found, or I'm sorry, on, um, on Mayfield Road, I found three without even looking for them. So, you know, I, I just wonder if maybe we should make some fluorescent uh, orange tags, go and affix them to these deer stands on the ladder, basically asking the hunter to reach out to us. Um, and if not, you know, if we don't hear from these hunters, then, you know, those tree stands don't take too long to, to take down, that's for sure. So Dennis has that? Uh, the, we the talked name? about it. It wasn't anything that we kind of moved forward. It was kind of more of a conversation okay. as we walked out of there. Um, but certainly uh -huh. something uh -huh. that I have that I'm thinking about as far as how we're handling this hunter roster and keeping, you know, we both did, agreed that it, when someone gains permission to a piece of property to hunt within three years, three more people gained permission because it's just how hunting works. Hey, I can, I hunt here. Why don't you come and set up next to me, whatever it is over a mm -hmm. 10 year period, you have 13 people hunting on a piece of property that you gave permission to one or two people. And it seems like that might be happening in different places. So this would be a way for us to kind of rein it in. Hey, contact us uh, if you want to keep this stand here. Let us know who you are. Give us some information and we move on. I think you'd have our full agreement if you wanted to move ahead with that. I saw okay. Dan shaking his head. George, do you have any no. problem with that? Nope, not at all. Yeah, it's a great idea. Okay. Kind of see it, see it as being under your remit about the deers and, and the, as you said, about the roster just you know, solidifying that, making it more robust. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so that's Makefield Brook. Um, Clearview. So I'm going to handle uh, uh, a utility box on Clearview. So Dennis uh, walked Clearview and found a collapsed fiberglass utility box uh, just east of the uh, tower, the American Tower um, structure there um, about three foot by three foot by two foot and it it's it's crushed in and but still parts of it standing and could present a risk so he's reached out to the township the great Hucklebridge that is Dennis has reached out uh, to him and it, Greg is is contacted American Tower and uh, since they own the towers and um, They've repaired them in the past, according to Dennis, uh, American Towers. So, but no response yet. Um, and he's temporarily covered the covered that uh, utility box with a wooden pallet and plywood, and flagged it uh, to to prevent other people from driving over it. So, so we'll uh, keep uh, Dennis. I'm sure will keep us updated on that. Okay. I thought that was oh. interesting in Dennis's notes there. Um, I, I don't think I ever realized, but, you know, there's that rectangle that the tower company owns. And then in between, there's basically like a horseshoe shape right. around that, that the township owns. So in between our field there and the tower property, there is a little sliver there that's actually the, the township owned property too. Yeah. And we always wondered, well, who the heck was mowing that? Because it's always seemed to be mowed. I guess it's the township. Maybe, yeah. Uh, hmm. Okay, anything else on that, on Clearview? No? Mike, so, we covered a bunch there. You want to see if there's any public comment on any of those things? Yeah, sure. Uh, Erica, any public comment up to this point? There's no public comment. Okay. All right, so the next item is a spring tour. So annually, uh, Farmland Preservation, the Board of Farmland Preservation has gone out with farmers, uh, toured the farms to look for issues that we've been discussing already tonight, buffer issues, trees falling down, maintenance that, that needs to be done. And uh, we're doing that again this year, April 30th, scheduled to meet at uh, Sterling Farm, which is Tom McGowan's farm on Twining Road. 
uh, starting at noon. Okay, so uh, I, Mike, I need to ask you. I've got the map here of the some that Sean gave me. You say sure. Sterling Farms. No, Sterling it's not a, Farms is not listed on that map. No, because because Sterling Farm is Tom McGowan's personal pro, personal farm. Okay, he farms a a section at the back of that. I'll call it at the back. It's Heather Ridge. That is our property. But okay. we but we use the Sterling Farm as a uh, convenient meeting spot. That's Got all. It. Okay, it's not one of it's not one of our properties. Okay, so sure, sure. So it'll be uh, April thirtieth, Saturday at noon. Uh, well, we have Tom coming. We have uh, 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 Sam and Tim Stewart. Um, they asked us if we can limit it to uh, to two hours. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to be there. Uh, so Dennis has agreed to, uh, to, you know, moderate things. And it, it, it would be really good, and I'll encourage uh, Dennis to do this, is to limit to, you know, more of the problem areas that need to be looked at. And I know we have a good handle on that with, with each of us taking the various properties. Um, so... Uh, but I also thought it would be very good for George to go out and see, and maybe even Sean, I don't know if you've seen all of the properties. I think by now you have, right? Yeah, I have by now, but I'm, you know, I, I love walking them, but I'm still very curious. I'd like to go, you know, I, not that, not that um, Leedoms is a problem area by any means, but with it being fully farmed this year for the first time in forever, you know, I'd kind of love to walk that a little bit with Tim because I know he had some conservation work done. There's certain areas where he can plant, can't plant. Um, you know, I spoke, like I mentioned, um, I spoke to Mr. Calavita about it just to, you know, let him know that it was happening and so on. But that could be mm -hmm. an interesting one to walk. But I, if we're going to limit it to two hours, then between, you know, greetings, travel, so on, we'll probably cover about two farms. So maybe leaders yeah. doesn't have to be one if there's problem areas, but. Um, what would you suggest? Maybe we could just discuss it here. We have time. Uh, what would you think would be the, the better ones to, to look at? Um, Dan, um, is Farm View one? worth walking i mean that has like a lot of interesting things about it from like from the basin area to the you know the buffer area to that area down at the bottom where we've walked several times with kind of the water taking a look at kind of the plan that they put in place there with growing the tall grass and and so on like that has a lot of that's multifaceted like is that one worth walking in your opinion um not not a high priority I, I think it's something that we've we've covered a, a number of times with with them okay and then you have that that other area at the uh call it at the back away from dolington road <clears throat> on that property where a, a lot of neighbors seem to be have the fence cut or down or there's a, been a salt lick there in the past for to attract deer when, when the neighbors put that out behind their house. How about that? Does that, or just deal with it as it comes up? Um, for the, Mike, I, I, to, I missed the beginning there. You're talking about the other farm view property, right? No, this, no, this is the, this is farm view one with a deep ravine at the bottom of the bottom of uh -huh. the hill, right? So down, yeah. down is where the water is and where they uh -huh. planted the corn. But along the back of that, um, I don't know how to say it, where the, where the development is, but to, uh -huh. sort of looking straight across from Dolington towards the field across. Yeah. Uh, there seem to be issues that pop up there every once in a while. Not recently. No, I mean, on the one, on both edges, there was some stuff, um, you know, just with some tree clean up on one side and then the, the, the wetness, but we had resolved that last year on the other side. So, okay. And, right. and I think in the bottom part of it, we're just waiting on the township to do a little bit of work there on the very bottom. So right, I, right. I don't, 
I, I don't, I mean, listen, we could take a look at that, that one, the ravine piece again, because we've had problems where it's, um, the, the, that, that swale is meant to, for water to go into it and go down. Right. Mm -hmm. And the issue has been that it's come up to the edges of it and then basically built more ruts going down. I mean, we right. can check it for that and just see what it looks like at the moment. But uh, mm. other than that, I think the bottom part was just kind of a, a wait and see at the moment. Hey, Mike, this okay. is George. I guess my one fundamental question would be is why did we put a two hour limit on it? it, two it, hours was, right. it well, it was really because of the stewards wanting, wanting to uh, have it not be too long. But, but it, you know, they can leave and the rest can can keep going. So there is really not a two hour limit. It's just to, with the farmers, it would be two hours. Okay, the only, reason I, the only reason I'm asking is to Sean's point, you know, you meet at Sterling Farms, by the time you do stuff, you walk somewhere, go over some things, then you hop in cars to go someplace else. So even though they're all relatively close, just travel time and getting in and out of cars and stuff like that is gonna eat up a chunk of it. Um, so whether we go to three hours, but I definitely, I've not walked most of them. You know, I've been on Stackhouse with Sean and I've been in part of Leadums. Um, I walk past Farmview One all the time. Um, so, but, you know, like bridal estates, which I have responsibility for, I'd really like to get out there and see it and whoever farms it, you know, at least get to meet them and understand it. So if mm -hmm. you're going to ask for priority, from my perspective, bridal estates would be one that I definitely would want to cover. Yeah. That may have to be uh, the covering bridal estates with Doug Wright may have to be, you know, a separately scheduled event, probably. Okay. And why? Well, I'm assuming that Doug hasn't, it did, did somebody even reach out to Doug about, about this, this uh, sure. farm tour? Well, I, pretty, I, I, yeah, don't, pretty, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I included him on the email, but he uh -huh. rarely, rarely. Uh, he doesn't but, generally but, participate in walking all of the other properties. Right. Okay. Right, where, where Tom, Tom will, Tom will help out with us and walk some of the other properties with us as well, um, you know, for, for our benefit and to help us. And, you know, he, he's very smart gentleman about, you know, conservation, things like that. But, but if you reach out to Doug, I'm sure, uh, do you have Doug's uh, info, George? No, I don't. I don't think so. So that's for me to... In the share drive, there's a contact list in there. And I'll shoot it to you also. Okay. Contact. Very nice gentleman. Contacted directly. Uh, and, and I, you know what? I don't know if I did this already, but I'll intro do, introduce you to by email. So that would be my uh, my action by email, and say that you're interested in uh, you know in, in walking the property with them. Huh. That'd be the best way to do it, I think. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. and, yeah. Okay. And then again, after the two hour limit, or however long the stewards can can stay, as as uh, Dan says, Tom's very uh, amenable to giving us advice on all the properties, which we value and um, be great to keep, keep going if you need to. Okay. Okay. Um, hang on a second. I'll check something here. Yep. Okay. Um, Mike, we should use uh, over the next you know, week or so, let's use teams to try and um, prioritize where we're going to go just so we have a plan when we show up at the farm at Sterling Farm on the 30th. Because as of right now, yeah. I haven't heard anything other than, con you know, getting George in contact with Doug Wright about Welcome Bridal Estates at a different date and time. But as far as the other farms, let's think about it and just kind of put them 
may be in an order so that when we show up at Sterling, we have a plan. Okay. So that's each of our actions to kind of yeah. know, list Let's that. throw list something that. out. Yeah. 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 With buffers being maintained by a third party, I don't, um, you know, Leadums, for instance, falls off of my, hey, let's, let's go walk mm. it. Um, and, you know, Stackhouse is interesting. There's a couple of things going on at Stackhouse that are kind of interesting. But, you know, we walked mm -hmm. that with them last year. And, you know, the main takeaway was that that one area that we kind of struggle with, it's a wetlands there's really like, they're not going to farm it. It's not going to get maintained. Um, and it was a very expensive overhaul for us to kind of tackle on our own from a maintenance standpoint. So yeah. I don't know that anything of value gets done there. Farm view too. Yeah, there, there's not anything to really discuss. Longshore clear view, Bethel. I don't, I don't see issues um, there, you know, unless we wanted to walk, I guess, longshore and walk around the, the tree property and where the tree had fallen. And it's not something we've walked recently. No, uh, or look at the, or look at the woods by, uh, oh, what's the fellow's name? Hmm. Yes. By Mr. Carney's yes. house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We yeah. can do that. And Heather Ridge, I mean, it would be close in proximity, number one, but Heather Ridge, is going to be on our radar for having some work done on the buffer area on the farm side. Um, you know, perhaps that could be another one that we walk, but I think with buffers kind of being maintained third party, it takes a little bit of the onus yeah. off of going to problem areas and pointing them out because that is not the crew that's going to be responsible for it or taking care of it. We've already mm -hmm. pointed out all of the problem areas to corporate. Right. And the conservation items that were on Clearview, that were on Stackhouse, they've been taken care of. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, all right, so where are we here? Tours Farms. Okay, so the next item, any, any further discussion on that, the tours, tour of the farms? Okay, and I'll update, update uh, Dennis too on what we discussed. Um, so, Community Day, August 27th, Saturday. Last year, we offered all of the farmers uh, an opportunity to display their wares at um, Community Day. It's held up at um, the township pool area nearby. And um, the stewards took us up on that. And so we sponsored them. And this year I haven't sent out anything. I wanted to wait for us to meet to, set, to, to get the sense, uh, your sense that it's okay to offer it to, to everyone again. I think the registration fee is $50. I don't think it's changed. Um, and then we also, um, and Dennis reached out to uh, Dr. Sternad, Sven, about doing a little demo of some kind about his beekeeping, his honey beekeeping uh, as well. So what, what do you think? Let's uh, send it out to everybody, all the farmers again, number yeah, one? That's reasonable. Okay. And then um, as is likely, we'll get a yes again from the stewards. And if they do, I guess uh, negotiate with them. They'd be willing to give a little piece of their tent uh, to, to Dr. Sturdat for a presentation. How does that sound? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I, I don't think what we, we'd have to get the township and, and it really wouldn't be worth it to put, because those tents are pretty good sized to get a separate one for Sven and his honeybees, right? I think if I'm not mistaken, I, I didn't go to it last year. Um, if I'm not mistaken, didn't the stewards get a bigger space than like the regular, like not the size that we had in the past Mike? Oh yeah. It was big. It was bigger. Right. Yeah. 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 So I, I imagine that I, I would think that they'd be willing to have, um, you know, the, the, the beekeeping display over there too. And, Mm -hmm. I also don't imagine that Dr. Sternad wanted to be there 
all day, the entire day. So that'll allow him to, you know, have a space to go and kind of come in, do some stuff a couple times and then be done. Right. Yep. For community day. Okay. I'm just writing down for myself. Okay. So I'll, I'll send out an email invitation like I did last time to see whether they're interested. Uh, and then coordinate with, uh, Dr. Sternad, so that he's aware. Because I don't think Dennis has heard back from him, a yay or nay, or I'm interested on, 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 uh, from uh, Dr. Sternad about his interest in being there. Uh, I think he, had, he may not officially have brought it up to him at, you know, with this specific township community day, but I know that it had come up a number of times prior to that that he would be interested in doing something. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, good. Yeah. So he'll probably, probably oh, for it, good. All right, um, so we're at the point of any other business, then we'll ask for public comment. Any other business? None here. Okay, I'm hearing here. none, all right, Dan? Good. Oh, I had one thing. So we took a, a, a short trip uh, last week to William, to uh, Virginia. And one of the places we, we visited was Williamsburg. And in Williamsburg, they had had a, a room dedicated to Edward in, the, in their um, museum, had a room dedicated to Edward Hicks, the Newtown painter from the 1700s, who's famous for Peaceable Kingdom, if anybody's heard of that, uh, showing William Penn. And anyway, he ha there was a painting there called Leadham Farm. He's from Newtown, this, this famous painter. <laughs> and I, I, I sent it to Tom McGowan. I said, it, you think this is Leadham, our Leadham Farm? He never responded. I haven't, I haven't tried to recontact him. But I did kind of do a little bit of research. And apparently there was a I don't know his first name, James Leader or Thomas Leadham, who had a farm in Newtown Township that is in today current uh, Newtown Township, kind of behind George School. So the Leadham family name, I never knew where, where our Leadham farm, where the name came from. Perhaps it must be that, that family from years ago. We'll have to, maybe you could ask the farmers on, on, the, uh, on the tour, be interesting. Yeah. yeah, I took, yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so, so uh, Hicks was, became a painter, but he was a sign, in Newtown, he had a sign, uh, a sign shop that he did fancy signs and wood and paint and painted that, and that's how he started. So I just thought I'd throw that in there. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's got, oh, he has, um, you can see it pretty quick. He's got things, Edward Hicks has things that are on display at the National Gallery of Art at the Met. Yes. Right. Yeah. Very well known. And I think actually then we went to Norfolk too, and there they have the Chrysler Museum, which is a, the son or grandson of the original Chrysler, Chrysler cars. And he had, he didn't have a room, but he had several Edward Hicks on display there as well. So <laughs> it was really amazing. Um, so, Erica, I'll ask if there is any public comment on what has transpired to that to this point. There is no public comment. Thank you. All right. Um, review of action items. You want me to go know. over that, Mike? Yeah, please. Okay. So, um, what I have is. Dan was going to just follow up regarding any further details around mowing on Heather Ridge property with Chance Worthington, just to make sure we understood clearly what was happening there. Yep. Um, it sounded like we were going to get back to Dennis uh, based off of Sean's um, recommendation that we go in and tag those deer stands with some sort of um, postcard thing or tag that ask them to try to contact us and reach out to us so we can get find out who's using those deer stands and add it to our list of approved hunters um 
Mike, you're supposed to send me uh, Doug Wright's contact information and some sort of intro there um, for um, bridal estates. Um, Sean had recommended that we use um, the team's software to try to prioritize April 30th walking tour. If anybody's got any priorities or recommendations for that, and that's basically everybody to follow up on. Um, you're going to, Mike, you're going to update Dennis on his items of what we discussed here tonight. And then the last thing I had was um, you were going to send an invite to all the farmers regarding community day on August 27th to see if they wanted to participate. And that's the list I have. That's the list I had too. Excellent. Very good. Any, anything else that we, that we missed? Sean, Dan? No. Okay. That's it. All right. Um, well, uh, if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn for this evening. So moved. Second. Second. It. And all in favor, raise your Aye. hand. All right. Aye. All right. Have a great evening, everyone.